Joining us now is Dr. Joseph Jacobson, head of the MIT Molecular Machines Research Group. Dr. Jacobson, thank you for being with us. I think the fastest vaccine ever produced was for mumps back in the 1960s, and that took four years. Obviously, technology has advanced in the last half century, but what are the challenges we still face in developing a vaccine, and how long do you think it might take? Yeah, actually, I, I think the first vaccine uh, back in 1796 by Ed Jenner actually set the record. It was about 46 days from concept to inpatient uh, challenged response. Uh, that's a great hallmark for us, I think, to, to think about. And for me, what's happening right now, the, the, not just the number of shots on goal that we're taking, but the number of different kinds of shots, the number of different types of approaches that we're taking to vaccine, I think is really exemplary. I think the probability is really high that by the end of this year, we're going to have efficacious vaccine. Does it really matter if there's no vaccine? Uh, for example, mm -hmm. there's no vaccine for AIDS, yeah. which was deadly when it first emerged. And since then, mm -hmm. we've discovered treatments that make it manageable. Is that a possible scenario for COVID-19? Yeah, I, I don't think so. I think, I think we've come a uh, tremendous distance uh, from those early AIDS vaccine attempts uh, in a couple of different levels. We've got the ability not just uh, to create uh, native protein or native antigen, but we can actually make recombinant uh, protein as a first level. We can make RNA vaccines uh, to express and to code for that, uh, those antigens. And as a third level, we can actually go after the DNA of the virus itself, so-called CRISPR vaccines. So I think we've got a lot of tools in the arsenal to go after these. I don't think we're going to need all of those for COVID. I think we're going to solve that with the first of these, first two of those. Uh, but we've got uh, a tremendous number of tools in the, in the tool chest um, I think we're going to uh, be able to be successful both on the vaccine front and on the therapeutic front for COVID. Professor Joseph Jacobson from MIT, thank you very much. Now, there are estimated to be at least 80 different vaccine research efforts around the world, and at least five of them just here in Israel. Lali, what is the business perspective on these different projects? What is our crowd looking for when choosing which one of these many options to invest in? Well, we typically look for two main things. One is a brilliant team, and the other is proven technologies. This will enable the company to hit the ground running when addressing COVID challenges. Now, our crowd has announced a $100 million pandemic innovation fund, and its first allocation is a $12 million investment in MIGVAX, an Israeli company developing a human vaccine for COVID-19. It's based on a vaccine platform they developed for a kind of avian coronavirus that has been proved effective in live animal testing. Joining us here in the studio is Dr. Sigal Kremertal, Vice President for Clinical and Regulatory Issues at MIGVAX. Dr. Kremertal, welcome to the Pandemic Innovation Conference. We know already that the MIGVAX vaccine kills the coronavirus in birds, but when will we know if it actually works on people? So we are aiming to start the first in human clinical trial at the end of this summer. So we're expecting the first human data to be available by the end of this year. Now you have to prove it works scientifically. What are the regulatory hurdles you have to pass before it can actually reach the market? Now the science is very strong. This vaccine hits all three arms of the immune system, including the humoral generating antibodies the cellular mediated immunity, as well as the mucosal immunity. In terms of regulation, vaccine is given to healthy people, so safety is at most importance and there, there's no way around it. And this is the main regulatory hurdles. Um, MIGVAX 101 is an oral vaccine, so safety profile is very, very favorable. Now, MIGVAX is a small research lab in the Galilee, but if your vaccine works, you're going to need billions of doses and worldwide distribution. How will you scale to that kind of global operation? So scale-up doesn't happen overnight. Um, we have uh, contacted global regulatory authorities to obtain their feedback on our regulatory and clinical program. These include the NIAID at the NIH, the Paul Ehrlich Institute in Germany, and the CEPI. CEPI is the Coalition for uh, Epidemiolo Epidemiology and Preparedness Innovation. 
They are backed by the World Ec Economic Forum as well as um, uh, various um, nations. And um, so we have their feedback on our clinical program, development program. In terms of manufacturing, so we have contracted BTG. It's a fairing company located in Israel for um, development and manufacture. In, uh, for additional scale-up, we are in contact with global companies to further scale up of uh, the manufacturing. And what about funding? $12 million might fund the research, but it's not going to get you global manufacturing and distribution of billions of doses of a vaccine. So this initial funding is uh, supposed to get us past the phase one, two clinical trial. Given the good results, we expect uh, additional contacts with the uh, investors, big pharma, as well as uh, uh, large manufacturers. Dr. Sigal Kremetal from MIGVAX, thank you very much.